Are you ready to turn your motion graphics from boring to the best in moments? Well, I'll show you the exact tricks in After Effects that will give your graphics that polished, incredibly clean pro Apple style. So <laughs> let's jump in. All right, so we'll start how to make any graphic have these clean edges and shadows. So you could put together a graphic with say the rounded rectangle tool, which gives you the ability to craft those curved edges. Just an amazing technique. Now, if you're working with text, my favorite clean font is plus Jakarta Sans. But when your design is complete, let's go ahead and apply the first style of effects and we'll start by throwing in a light gray solid at this time. Now, firstly, duplicate your background shape of your graphics and apply the CC radial fast blur effect and change the color to black, or you could add the fill effect and change it to black that way as well. Now, you can increase the amount to around 95 and position the center point to the top corner like so. Now, this gives us too much power of a long drop shadow, so we can use the Gaussian blur effect to tone this down, and we can try lowering the opacity of the layer to create a subtle shadow. Excellent. Now, for the foreground graphic, let's right click it and apply the gradient overlay style. We'll go ahead and set one of the first colors uh, to a light grayish, you know, blue color. And then the second color we can set to a slightly darker grayish blue. Now, let's go back to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. We'll want to set both of these color values to white and then their modes to normal. And then of course, we'll set their opacities at 100%. You're welcome to mess with the angle until you're happy with that white streak. And for the last layer style, you can try a drop shadow and use a white color as well. You can then angle this to the darker side of your bevel and emboss, and then shorten up the shadow to give you a slight white buffer. And that's literally it. You can now give any graphic that professional edge. Beautiful. And ensure you always produce beautiful work in no time for free templates, seamless transitions, and customizable motion graphics. All here in our Motion Duck extension, you can add thousands of templates and presets directly into your projects and tailor them to fit your needs in seconds. So be sure to enhance your creative flow with the countless assets below. And if you do pick up anything, you will be supporting this channel. So thank you very much. The next clean trick is turning any of your graphics into glass. So let's say we have the same exact layer styles and effects from the last technique, except I'll give this some color by changing the gradient overlay to some blue tones. You know, just a very adaptable technique here. Uh, for this glass, let's go ahead and create another rounded shape, but you know, it could be any shape of your choice. Once created, immediately duplicate it, and we'll go ahead and turn off that top layer for now. But from here, let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer and set its track mat to that bottom shape that we created. Now, let's go ahead and apply the tint effect and the curves effect. With these, I like to change both of the colors to either white or a light color of your choice and then lower the amount by a lot. This will essentially decolorize what's underneath the glass. And then we'll use the curves effect to darken down the background as well. Now, let's go ahead and sweeten this with the scatter effect and increase the amount to add some of that nice distortion. Lastly, let's use the compound blur effect and then you can invert the blur to create a soft glass or even better, what I like to do is throw in a texture image of your choice right into your timeline and turn it off. Then you can set the blur layer to the texture and increase the maximum blur and just don't check invert blur and awesome. Now for the actual frame of the glass, we'll go ahead and turn that top layer back on and we'll use the bevel and emboss effect again. This time, for the very first time, we'll go ahead and set the fill opacity to 0%. And by doing this, only our layer styles will be applied to our layer. Now, just like before, we'll set both modes to normal, but this time only set the highlight opacity to 100 and keep the shadow opacity relatively low. Now to make this all pop out, let's increase the depth to nearly a thousand percent. And if you want, you can adjust the altitude until the shadow side is more pronounced. And you can also adjust the angle at your own preference, but you can feel free to animate it to give you a light reflection look. Now for a quick polish, add the inner glow layer style and set the opacity to max and then increase the size. I also suggest setting the color to a dark hue that matches the background best. So like this dark blue. Great. Now the last thing you may want to try is the CC light sweep effect on an adjustment layer, and then you can set its track mat to that bottom shape. 
and by lowering the intensities of this light streak, we can have this nice subtle effect. And don't forget to animate the center, and this last effect will work great when you pop a logo or a title on top of it. All right, the third technique is a very quick one which turns your graphics into a showroom vibe with some procedural shading. <laughs> to do this, make your main graphic a 3D layer and also duplicate your background and make it 3D as well. Now for this duplicated background, set the X rotation to 90 degrees and then lower this under your main graphic like so and then increase the scale. Alrighty, let's create a point light with shadows casted and on the floor and your graphic layer, go to the material options and turn off accept lights. Much better. Then push your light back into Z position space and you can adjust the Y value as well. You see how the shadows update. But to control the shadow, we want to set the fall off to smooth and then increase the fall off distance by a lot and then hone in the amount with the radius value. And most importantly, don't forget to increase your shadow diffusion for this nice subtle shadow. Lastly, I would try using the four color gradient effect on your main shape and then use two white colors and two grayer colors and of course adjust the points to create a white gradient with a darker bottom. Boom, showroom on demand. Now with these techniques, you can create a lot of exciting work. For instance, you can animate the CC radial fast blur center values to create a moving shadow scene that looks epic. However, subscribe to be the best and always be creating.